and welcome to another Kid Light Chat. I have the wonderful Maria Desmundi here. Hey, Maria, how are you? Good, thanks for having me. Yes, thanks so much for doing this. I have to say, it was really hard for me to narrow down questions because we, we try to keep this short. You are such a fascinating woman. I was having so much Aww. fun. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> for sure. But for those who are watching who maybe have never heard of you before, um, tell us a little bit about who you are and why you love children's books. Yes. So I am a former teacher. Um, I think that's kind of where my love of children's books came from. I um, taught first and second grade for just over a decade. And I used children's literature to um, start all of my lessons. So if I was teaching a math lesson, I would use a book. If I was teaching a science lesson, I would use a book. Um, so it was always in the forefront of everything that I did. Um, I think that's really what started it. And I was a reader as a kid too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think that's why we all get into it. We just, books are just so fun. So it's so fun. Well, you've published your first book, Spaghetti in a Hot Dog Bun, which I find so funny. That was in 2008. Um, and when you publish many books, both yourself and then you have a publishing house, uh, Carnal Rule Press. So what's been your favorite thing about being an author specifically and how do you connect with your readers? Yeah, so I think my favorite thing about being an author is connecting in schools with students. So um, I love being at a school assembly and talking about the concept of the book and um, how I got the idea. And, you know, all of the books that I write are realistic fiction and they're all focused on empowering topics like, you know, being yourself and kindness wins and, you know, um, communicating with friends. So they're just these topics that give children these social tools to practice. And so when I'm in the schools and I see their little faces and I see them connecting to the message and the themes of my story, that just is a home run for me. So I think that's really my favorite part about being an author. Yeah, I have a side thought off of that, um, because I think so many of us as children's book writers, and most of our viewers are going to be children's book writers, have an idea that is, you know, they have this big takeaway, this, this big value. So how do you approach a story like that? Are your stories, would you say, kind of message driven, or do they have like a story? And then there's takeaway and discussion that you can have based off of that story. Yeah, they're, we really try not to um, have them message message driven. They're more of a storyline than the message is taken from it. And um, the children are always the problem solvers in the story. So they may have an adult that is important in their lives, but the adults aren't solving the problems for them. And I think that's really important too, for children to be able to see that they have the choice and the um, wherewithal to solve their own problems. Agreed. Agreed. I think that's so key. I mean, especially when you're reading a book, you want to be like, oh, I can be like that character, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's awesome. Well, in 2016, you switched from just being an author to actually being a publisher, which we mentioned, Cardinal Rule Press. So mm -hmm. talk to us a little bit about why you wanted to start the publishing house and um, what it's been like to create books for other authors. Yeah, I, you know, I think part of it is um, being in the limelight. I was kind of feeling tired of, you know, having these book launches and going and being like the person who, you know, I don't know, it just kind of felt draining being, I don't want to say celebrity because I don't feel like authors are celebrities, but, you know, I would like go to Target and someone would be like, oh, Coffee, and I'd be with my kids and, you know, I'd be with my three young children. I'd be a hot mess. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't want to be recognized when I'm at Target. And um, I don't know, part of it was that I just kind of wanted to like take a step back from public, I guess. And then the other part was there are so many beautiful stories out there and being an author can be really challenging to take your story from idea to book. And I wanted to give that opportunity to other writers. Um, and I wanted to do it in a way that really brought in my education, being a teacher um, as well. So part of our program is we mentor our authors and we teach them about marketing to be successful in the book industry. Because I, I realized that most authors don't want to go into it to be in sales and marketing, but the only way your book is going to sell is if you market yourself. So we teach um, our authors a way to do that, that is very comfortable for them um, so that they're not, you know, uh, lacking integrity in the purpose of writing. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's so important. I, it is scary, but 
I mean, you're just talking about this book you've been working on that you're so excited about, you know? Yeah. And if you just yeah. try to be authentic to yourself and what feels good, it's not as scary to sell and to market your book. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That's the point is you have to be yourself and do what's authentic, like you said. Exactly. Yeah. Well, you have a couple of other imprints now. Um, if you want, you can remind us of the titles of those. Okay. But they each have their own mission too. So you want to tell us which they are and uh, what kind of books they publish? Yeah. So one of them is Violet Street Press. And um, that one started, I was toying around with the idea uh, to bring in parenting books into the market. And so we had one Sunnyside Upbringing go out and it came out in 2020, which was it was a really difficult year to have a book be released. Um, and we have since not taken on any other parenting books. And what I'm finding as a publisher is the research and information is so timely in parenting books that I'm not sure that's a risk I want to take anymore as a small publisher. So we have that one title. And then we also have the bucket filler books. And that was a purchase. We purchased another company, um, publishing company, two years ago now. And so those books are all a line of books that came from the author, Carol McLeod. And they are beautiful books that talk about this concept of us all walking around with an invisible bucket. And when we're kind to others and we do kind things to others, we fill people's buckets. And then when we are not kind to others, it's dipping into their bucket. And so it's this beautiful concept. Um, and so that's the other imprint. Yeah, that is so cool. Well, um, you know, when you're looking at publishing houses, like, you know, those are very distinct things, very distinct imprints in what they do. And also you're yeah. mentioning, you know, that the one is closed, but let's say you're an author and you're trying to go on submission, you're trying to find a publisher. Like, can you talk to us about how you would know if the publisher is right for you? Yeah. You know, I think one of the things is you have to get familiar with the books that they are publishing um, and even the art. And if that's something, you know, like our books have a very specific um, look to them. They're very, they're very uh, like the illustrations are very bright. They come from um, different angles. You know, we have got bird's eye view and a lot of our illustrations, we have full page spreads. And if that's not your thing, then that would not be, you know, you would not want to work with us. Um, so I think you really have to also look at a publisher, not only from what do their books look like, but what do they stand for? Um, so we, for example, we love all people and um, we support the LGBTQ plus community. And so I know that's not for everyone. So I think you want to know, like, what are the core values of that publishing company and can you support them and can you back them? Yeah, I think that that's so important too. And, you know, does your book make sense on their bookshelf? Like, what are they used to publishing? You don't want to go to a science only publishing house and then you have this like magical fairy tale book. Like, they wouldn't even know how to sell that because that's not where their niche is, anyways, you know? And so. I think, I think our, our, and that's the sad part for our writers is I feel like, um, what is the, the term work harder? Wait, work smarter, not harder. Yeah. And so taking the time to figure out which publishers to submit to is going to save you so much time um, instead of just submitting to everyone. So we get so many submissions that are like sci-fi romance for adults. And if the person just looked at our website, they would know we don't even do adult books. So, um, you know, it makes me sad because composing that email and that query letter, that was probably like a good 15 to 20 minutes for that person. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's, it's wasting your time in um, not knowing who to publish or who to submit to. And it gives you unnecessary rejection. So then you start to feel bad about your story. It has nothing to do with your book. It has everything to do with you just send it to the wrong publisher. It wasn't yeah. a fit. Yeah. Yeah. So do your research. Definitely. Great advice. Well, do you have any books that either you've written or that you're getting ready to publish that you're really excited about right now that have either recently mm. debuted or upcoming? This one, I like this question. So we have a book called The Heavy Bag that is coming out April 1st, and it's written by Sarah, Sarah Sergi, and she's a UK author. So this is the first time we've ever purchased the rights of a title, a foreign title. Um, and so it has been published in 14 languages. And so we are publishing the U.S. version. And it's a story. Oh, it's so beautiful. It's a story about this little girl with this huge and you actually like you have the yellow that it's the color <laughs> yellow. Um, you're wearing it right now. But she has this huge yellow backpack and her grandfather had passed away. 
And she goes through the story talking to different people in her town about missing her grandfather. And every time she talks about a loving story about him, her bag gets lighter and lighter. So it's a beautiful story about grief and just how uh, grief can be heavy on us. But by talking through it, it can really lighten our load. So it's a it's a really good book, um, a good analogy for kids too. And um, the, Sarah has shared her book um, with Ukraine children who are refugees. She has shared it um, with UNICEF overseas. So it's it's been doing really well and helping children in difficult situations. So I'm excited to bring that one to the U.S. Yeah. Oh, that sounds like such a good topic. And, you know, playing with the colors, yellow is like happy. So it is, it's like sunshine. So yeah. 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 Oh, mm-hmm. that's so cool. Um, well, we should also talk about your nonprofit since we're talking about like all these uplifting things. I told you, you do all. Do you the really things. want to bring this? Do you really want to bring this one up? Because I will not stop talking. About this I'm one. sure. Well, it sounds like such a cool mission. So it's called Making Spirits Bright. Talk to us. What is it? What's it do? Tell us all the things. I I just when I start talking about it, my friends all say, "Oh my gosh, you're so passionate about it. You you just won't stop." I I've seen. Okay, we live in Michigan, and I have just been at friends' houses, and I've seen their children's bookshelves with books just sitting there. And I'm, I think to myself, okay, so there's all these people who have books that aren't reading them any longer, but then there's these book deserts that are deemed these geographical areas where children don't have books in the home. And in order for our kids to read, you know, they're learning to read at school, but in order for you to really become a reader, it has to be part of your reading culture. It has to be part of your environment. Mm -hmm. So I thought, what if we started a nonprofit and we we're able to get books from people who are no longer using them and put them into homes that need them. And lo and behold, people are doing this all over the country. Um, And so I connected with, yeah, it's so cool. I connected with an organization um, and no one in Michigan is part of this organization. So this organization has 180 other nonprofits in the United States that are doing something similar where they're collecting, sorting, and then redistributing books. So I'm learning about it. And um, over the summer, we created a board. And this fall, we worked with a consultant and we, you know, laid the foundation of the nonprofit. And then this fall, we had started our first few fundraisers and book drives. And two local organizations did book drives. And we collected the books all in the same week. We collected 15,000 books. It was insane. Um, yeah. And it's just, I, I just love so many things about the nonprofit because- we collected the, the 15,000 books. I reached out to local organizations to see if anyone had trucks that they could lend us to get these books because I have a minivan. And a local um, construction company said, oh, we'd love to help you. So they sent two trucks with a trailer and a bunch of their employees to come one day to help us. So it's not just about Making Spirits Bright, the nonprofit. It's about all these other companies who want to partner with nonprofits. It's about our community. You know, like our local high school gave us 8,000 books that they um, collected. It's just about a lot of people coming together and wanting to do something good. And um, and it's not about money, which I love. Like, it, we're not asking people to give us money. We're just saying, if you have books and you're no longer using them, give them to us and we'll find them a good home. Yeah, oh, that is so cool. I yeah, love I it. I, I think it's just, yeah, it's so fun. And right now we're we're stuck with all of these um very specific, they're called action mystery adult books. And so some of the authors are like Clive Cussler and Ken Follett. Um, and it's really hard to to find homes for these books because they're a specific genre. So actually senior citizens like to read these books. So this week I've been calling senior homes to see um, if they would like these books. Yeah. (laughs) You can just tell them they can be the next Thursday murder club. if they. I love it. I love it. Yes. (laughs) If they do this, that's that's so interesting. I love it. I told you, I could talk to you forever, but. um... I mean, thank you. And, but this is like a full circle thing. It's so cool. Like author, publisher, and then being able to do something in the nonprofit space, you know, it just kind of all comes together. So. And I think it's a really good, like kind of a nudge for um, authors too. It's like, you don't have to be linear. You don't have, there isn't just one path. There isn't just one journey and you can do whatever you want, whatever feels good. Like if they want to be, they want to be in the limelight, they want to be stopped at target. That could be them. 
or they could just stay behind, you know, their screen. I mean, I don't, I hardly ever leave my house anymore. <laughs> I'm just chilling over here. <laughs> uh, I love it. All that where are you, where do you zoom in from? Iowa. Iowa, so, okay. Midwest still, but uh, yeah, cool. a little bit south. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Well, your last question is about the lions and we didn't make it, but we came so close. Close. I know we were supposed to meet before last weekend, but gosh, I really was rooting for him. You know, a good Cinderella story is always my fave. Isn't it? Oh, I yeah. know. I love a good Cinderella story. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we'll just write a book about it, but I'm from Iowa. So we don't have a, an affiliate team, you know, like we do not have any affiliation to anyone. <laughs> so it's like either a Vikings fan or a Packers fan or a Chiefs fan. But sometimes I'm just a, I'm the underdog fan. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah. I love I it. I know. Yeah. Well, Maria, this was so fun. I'm so glad we got to spend time. And guys, yes. Maria uh, has all sorts of information, but I linked to her website so that you guys can go and learn more about her and her publishing house and her books that she has and her nonprofit. And if you want to donate books, you could do that as well. But Thank yeah. You. And if anyone has questions, I, you know, there are some weeks where I'm overwhelmed with email and there's some weeks I'm not. So feel free to shoot me an email and I will get back with you when I can Maria at cardinalrulepress.com. Um, you know, there's so much information on the internet and I think connecting with people in the book space is going to be your best bet. I mean, you can Google till the cows come home, but doing what Brooke is doing and just being able to connect with other people in this space is going to take you even further. Yeah, it's so true. You wouldn't be anywhere without your community. Like that's the best part about the children. And they're so fun. Like my children's book group, my critique group, they're my favorite friends, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Brooke. <laughs> yes. Thanks for doing this.